Hello and welcome to this TechNet UK screencast. My name is Simon May and I'm an evangelist for Microsoft. Today I'm going to introduce you to the Microsoft Assessment and Planning Toolkit version 5.5 which allows you to understand the environment that you're working in. The toolkit takes the form of an agentless scanner, meaning that you don't have to actually install it on every PC on your network. It then scans your network to understand what types of computers you have deployed. It understands what operating systems they are and what software is running on them. So without further ado, we'll go and install the software. It's a simple installation wizard, so we'll just click next. And we'll accept the license agreement. Obviously I've done this a few times and I've already read the agreement thoroughly. We need to provide an installation location, so we'll just take the default. And then we need to provide access to a SQL Server. The Map Toolkit expects to find a SQL Server Express installation. This machine is not connected to the internet, so we'll have to provide those files for it, which we'll now just browse to. And obviously I'm installing the 32-bit version because I'm running on a 32-bit version of Windows 7. I click Next and I'll have to accept the license agreement for SQL Server Express. And then Next again. Things are ready to go. As you probably notice, this video has been speeded up just a little bit. It takes a while to install SQL Server Express, so to make the video go a little bit quicker, we've just wound it forward. Okay, now that the installation is completed, all we need to do is click finish and the map toolkit will automatically launch. Now we need to configure the database. All of the information that's stored within the map toolkit is stored within that SQL Server Express database we just created. So let's give it a name. We'll call this one map. And we'll also provide a description. Just something nice and easy my map database and again we'll just click OK. Now that we've done that we need to actually query our network to find out what's out there so we we'll use the inventory and assessment wizard to do that. Within the wizard we have to decide what app we actually want to inventory. We're going to select Windows based computers but we could equally select Linux based computers or any of the other options. Let's just take a moment to have a quick look over them. Now that we've done that, let's move on to the next page. Here we need to select the discovery methods that will be used to find out what's on our network. In our case, we're going to use Active Directory and we're going to untick the second option. That's because we don't have any NT4 or legacy networks to understand. We're also going to tick Scan an IP range. That's because we've actually got some PCs on our network which aren't members of the domain. Now we provide some security credentials for Active Directory. And then you'll see that the PC connects to Active Directory and pulls down information about those PCs. At this point, I can filter this information down just as specific I used. Now I'm going to enter the IP address range that I want to query. And again, I just hit next. I'm asked for some more credentials. These are the credentials that will be used to connect to the WMI provider on at the PCs on our network. Now, you'll see that I'm about to get an error. And the reason for that is that I've not actually entered my credentials correctly. 
One of the good things that the wizard does is it actually does ensure that you're entering the correct credentials. So let's just tidy this up a bit. And there we have it. We'll click save. And we'll just click next to move on. If we provided multiple sets of credentials, we could determine an order in which they would be used. Finally, we just get a summary screen. And now we get a progress bar up here, along with some detailed information about what's being scanned. Again, you'll notice that just as with the SQL Server installation, I've actually speeded this video up. The reason being that we're traversing quite a large number of IP addresses, and in doing so, we're sending out WMI queries to each, and that can take a while. You don't have to watch this dialog box all the way through though. If you look in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, you'll see a little progress bar. That tells you that a query is still going on. It's completely fine to click the close button at any point. So now we'll go and click close, and then we'll go and have a look at the information that's been pulled back for us. To find the information, we'll go up to the inf Inventory and Assessment bar, and then we'll select Discovery and Readiness. First, let's have a quick look at the Windows 7 Readiness. So, let's go and have a look at our Windows 7 Readiness report. Here we get a bunch of pie graphs. The first one shows us what PCs are going to be ready to run Windows 7 before any hardware upgrades. We can see that we have two that are ready, and two that are not. We also have a graph that tells us how many PCs are going to be ready to run Windows 7 following hardware upgrades. And here we can see that following hardware upgrades we have no PCs that will not be able to run Windows 7. Finally we have some information about devices that are installed in these PCs. As you can see there aren't actually anything complicated installed in any of these PCs so we'll just skip that section for now. We'll now move on and take a quick look at the Office 2010 readiness report. Again, we have a bunch of graphs, and again we're told how many machines are going to be able to run Office 2010 right now, and how many will require upgrades. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll be able to see what other versions of Office are running within our network. Well, this is all great information about the general state of our network, but let's go and find out some more information about the specifics of individual PCs. To do that, we go to the Inventory Results section, and we select All Computers. Here, we get a view of all the computers that were scanned on our network. We can see whether the WMI inventory was a success, or whether it failed. So, the ones that have failed, we can then go and troubleshoot and rerun the inventory. But what about if we need some more information? What about if we want to drill down into each computer? Well, to do that, if we go to the Inventory Summary Results and then select All Products, we'll be able to find out more information about each machine. And as you can see, for each machine that we've scanned, we can see exactly what software is installed on that PC. So, I can see which machines have got SQL Server Express on them, and which machines have got Office on them. Being able to view all of this information in this console is a really great advantage. However, it would be fantastic if we could take the information and actually produce reports that we can then show to whoever needs to make decisions about upgrading the hardware. To do that, we just go to Tools and select Generate Reports. Then we get Word and Excel based formats reports that give that information in an easy to manage and digest format. To make this video easier to watch, I've actually speeded up generation of the reports.
Once they're complete, we need to go and open them up in Word and in Excel. The reports have been created for us inside the Documents Library, so we'll go and open that up through Windows Explorer, and we'll find that there is a map folder within the Documents Library, and again, within the map folder, a map subfolder. In here, we'll find all of our reports. The first one we're going to open is the Excel document. Within this Excel-based report, we'll find lots of information about the computers on our network. All the information is held in a different tab, and each tab has an explanation of the information that's stored within it. From here, we can easily identify those computers that require a hardware upgrade, and we can use this information to provide to the decision makers so that they can make a decision about upgrading that hardware or not. For example, if we look here at this computer, we can see that we need to provide more RAM in this computer. Currently, it's only got 64 meg, and the requirements for Windows 7 are 512k meg of RAM as a minimum. In the recommended tab, we can actually see what kind of upgrades will be required to move all the computers to the recommended level for Windows 7. And we can see a list of all the software that's been installed on each of these PCs. We'll close Excel now and we'll go back and have a look at what's in the Word document that was created at the same time. Here you'll find a well formatted assessment document that you can hand over to key decision makers who can understand what the requirements are for upgrading Windows 7 purely on the basis of this report. The report contains tons of useful info, including all the key features of Windows 7, so it really does help to make it easier for you to justify getting those upgrades done in order for you to be able to roll out Windows 7. Obviously you might not want to use this report in its entirety and you can just pick and choose bits of sections to take out and compile into another report that you may feel is even more suitable to your audience. Now though, let's close the Word document down and go and have a look at what else we can do with the Map Toolkit. Obviously we can produce the same kind of reports for Office 2010 readiness. So let's go and do that. This time though, whilst those reports are being generated, let's go and do something a little bit different. Let's go and have a look at what's happened with Internet Explorer in this environment. Again, the toolkit can actually understand what versions of Internet Explorer and, very critically, what add-ons for Internet Explorer are deployed throughout the environment. Okay, our report has been created for Office 2010. So let's go and have a look at those documents now. Again, we get a good view of how compatible Office 2010 is with our current estate and what we need to do in order to make our current estate up to spec in order to run Office 2010 on all of our machines. Obviously, there's a Word version of this report available as well, just as there was for the Windows 7 report. So, if you want to get hold of the Map Toolkit, just pop to the Microsoft Download site. For more information, check out Microsoft TechNet. Thanks very much for watching.